Marvel Comics is an American company, so it's no surprise that the United States was the first country to find itself reflected in a superhero motif. Captain America was created by Joe Simon and Jack Kirby in 1941 as a rallying cry for the US to enter the Second World War. But Captain America isn't the only hero with patriotic sensibilities. Over the years, a number of heroes with pride in their home turf have popped up, ready to represent their nation and protect it from potential threats. So, I am Kirsten from What Culture, and this is Every National Hero in Marvel Comics Explained. Number 10, Major Maple Leaf. Lewis Sadler Sr. first took up the mantle of Major Maple Leaf during World War II after being empowered by an undisclosed process. He fought with the allied superhero group The Invaders, but he is perhaps best known for his role in fellow Canadian hero North Stars coming out. When Sadler Sr.'s eldest son passed away from AIDS-related illness, he was incensed by the homophobic public reaction to the HIV-slash-AIDS epidemic. Maple Leaf embarked on a rampage shortly after, only to be stopped by North Star, who came out as gay in the same storyline. Number 9. American Eagle Jason Strongbow, known by his alias of American Eagle, represents the Navajo Nation. Strongbow gained his abilities via a tith with Ulysses Claw, who was mining and destroying a mountain sacred to the Navajo. The resulting exposure to uranium and a sonic blast from the baddie bestowed him with superhuman strength and ability, and amplified his senses. His initial appearances were insensitive to say the least, but the character received an update in 2007 with a leather jacket and novelty eagle-shaped biker helmet, a vast improvement over the original design. Considering the state of Native American representation in popular culture, it is a tragedy that the character has since been chronically neglected. Number 8. Black Panther the crowned monarch of the fictional African state Wakanda also carries the title of Black Panther and serves as the country's protector. Of the many figures to take on the mantle of Black Panther, T'Challa is the most prominent iteration of the character. Like his predecessors, T'Challa gained superhuman powers from a special herb native to his territory, which bestows them with suitably cat-like reflexes and enhanced stamina and strength. Wakanda's immense supply of the extremely rare element Vibranium gives Black Panther a near-indestructible combat suit and advanced weaponry. Number 7. Captain Britain and the Core Earth-616's Brian Braddock is effectively the main Captain Britain, as the son of one Sir James Braddock, an otherworld guardian sent to Earth to father a great superhero. Another otherworld being is Merlin. Yes, as in King Arthur and his round table, whose daughter, Roma, bestowed Brian Braddock with his Captain Britain gifts via the Amulet of Right, which transformed Braddock into a super-powered hero. Many realities have a version of Captain Britain. A far from exhaustive list includes Captain UK, Albion, Captain Airstrip, so Orwell gets a look in, Captain Brit, and most unusually, a Hauptmann Ongland, who hails from a reality where the Nazis won World War II. Together they formed Captain Britain Corps, under the leadership of Merlin and Roma, and worked to keep the multiverse safe. Number 6. Captain America At the beginning of America's involvement in World War II, Steve Rogers was a kid from Brooklyn. He wanted to enlist in the US Army, but was rejected on medical grounds. A second chance came in a procedure called Project Rebirth, a US scientific experiment to create super soldiers. It worked, but when the super soldier serum's creator, Dr. Abraham Erskine, was assassinated, it died with him, leaving Steve Rogers the only living reminder of his work. Thus, patriotic mascot Captain America was born. But Second World War patriotism didn't translate into post-war America, and so the character needed amendments. The 1950s incarnation took on communism amid the ongoing political tensions of the Cold War, although this was later retconned so that it wasn't actually Rogers. The Watergate scandal disillusioned Cap from the US government, and the Superhuman Registration Act turned him against the government entirely, kicking off Marvel's Civil War. Number 5. Guardian James McDonald Hudson, a doctorate-level engineer, created a power suit for the Amcan Corporation that gave him superhuman abilities. As soon as he found out that it was going to be used by the American military, however, he nicked the suit for himself. It's a good thing the Canadian government decided to pardon him and enlist him for their own purposes rather than charge him for his crimes, or else that would have been a hefty
lengthy prison sentence. Hudson went on to call himself Guardian and gave his suit a very Canadian paint job. As leader of Alpha Flight, he really embodied the Canadian spirit to become their national hero. Alpha Flight itself featured the best of Canada's superheroes, except Wolverine, because of course, he wanted nothing to do with it. Number 4. Iron Cross Iron Cross's first appearance in 1979 goes pretty much as you would expect. Helmut Gruler dons experimental supercharged armor created by German scientists and old school friend Professor Franz Schneider and becomes the Axis Powers answer to Steve Rogers. Iron Cross was technically a national hero, even if he was on the side of the Nazis. He at least managed a redemption arc of sorts when Gruber became part of an organization tasked with hunting down war heroes. He died fighting for the right side, which was of some comfort to his daughter, Claire. An inhuman, Claire Gruler took on her father's mantle to become a real hero for her home country. She even took her father's attachment to his suit a step further too, molecularly bonding herself to it as a result of her inhuman genetic makeup. Number 3. Miss America In 1943, Madeline Joyce gained her powers as a result of tampering with a mysterious device during an electrical storm. She was actively seeking to get zapped in the hopes of manifesting superhuman abilities. One Professor Lawson had already gotten his in the same way. Unfortunately, Lawson believed Joyce had died by the process, which led to his guilt-ridden suicide. He wouldn't know that Madeline would wake up graced with flight and super strength. Madeline Joyce adopted the patriotic title and costume of Miss America and fought alongside other nationally themed heroes in Liberty Legion and the Invaders. She married one of the heroes she fought alongside, Robert Frank aka The Wizard, and had a radioactively charged mutant child, Nuclo. Her second pregnancy would end with too many complications, resulting in the death of her child and herself. Number 2. Red Guardian The Cold War brought about Captain America's Russian counterpart, Red Guardian. Alexei Shostakov, a Russian pilot and KGB agent, first appeared in 1967. The program which created Red Guardian required that he fake his own death to ensure anonymity, even from his wife Natalia Romanov. He received combat training and gadgets, including a magnetic throwing disc which attached to his belt for easy access. Add that to his red costume and hammer and sickle emblems, and the parallels between Captain America are anything but subtle. Unfortunately, his wife Natalia would switch allegiances from the Soviet Union, their eventual reunion and revelation of its true identity came only moments before his death protecting Black Widow and Captain America. In Marvel's internal chronology, Shostakov was preceded by Alexei Lebedev. This incarnation came into conflict with William Naslund's Captain America shortly after World War II. Unlike his later counterparts, Lebedev's Red Guardian was more critical of his home country. He was ultimately executed during the Soviet purges of the 1950s. Number 1. Union Jack Lord James Falsworth was the first Union Jack. He was a British soldier during the First World War who fought in the Freedoms Five. He returned to his post during World War II and joined the invaders, but when his vampire brother, Baron Blood, attacked him and crushed his legs, he was effectively put out of service. His son Brian would succeed him, while his daughter Jacqueline became the hero Spitfire. Together they joined the allied team, the Invaders, to carry on the work their father had started. Despite his service throughout World War II, Brian doesn't live much longer after it ended, and was unceremoniously killed in a car crash in the early 1950s. Spitfire's son Kenneth, however, did not fancy continuing the family business. It was left to common working class boy Joseph Chapman to pick up the Union Jack name following a visit to the Falseworth estate. Chapman remained friends with the Falseworths, serving as their protector against vampiric relatives with a vendetta. He also became close to Captain America and they often worked together to prevent neo-Nazi uprisings in the UK. Union Jack will soon appear as the leader of new British team, the Union. While other countries will always be outnumbered by the sheer volume of American heroes and teams, these national heroes show what Marvel have to gain by taking a more international approach to their stories. And there you are, every national hero in Marvel Comics explained. But for now, I have been Kirsten Rhea from War Culture, and I'll see you in the next video.